Every age is added to the beauty of the eternal capital, but it was the unrivaled Benini who gave the city some of its finest fountains and sculptures. His masterworks are in the Villa Borghese. He's not interested in the static, but in the moment when things are moving and happening. He was an anxious man, Bernini, and in a way, this is a story based upon anxiety. It's the story of Apollo and Daphne. Apollo, the sun god, who fell passionately in love with Daphne, the water nymph, and she did not love him, and he pursued her. And here we see the pursuit, Daphne fleeing desperately. She does not want him, and he's just about to seize her. Look at her face, an absolute rictus of anguish and distress, calling out on her father, the river god, to save her. And apparently nothing is happening. We see what's happening before she does. Her delicate little toes are spotting roots, and round her naked, vulnerable body, to shield her against Apollo, is growing bark. Her father is turning her into a laurel tree. Look at those fingers raised to the skies for help. And they're sprouting leaves. She hasn't even seen it yet. She's still crying. And on Apollo's face is the stupefied disappointment of somebody who just at the last moment has their heart's desire snatched away from them. Now, this myth, I think, goes deep into the human psyche. Why did death mean? Was she afraid of sex? Or was she afraid of this particular man, Apollo? We don't know. That's not told to us. Just this strange story that's repeated throughout human destiny of one who loves and one who does not love. And yet, in some miraculous way, and here's where Bernini is so wonderful, because he never ends in disaster, Apollo also gets his heart desire in a way he didn't expect, because when she turns into a laurel tree, he makes that his tree. And forever after, Apollo wears on his curly hair a wreath of laurel. So it's a story about getting your heart's desire in a way you don't desire. And she, receiving love, innocently, non-sexually, in a way that she never expected, Not all great art is to be found in museums. In ordinary churches all over Rome, one can stumble across a masterpiece. Here at Santa Maria del Popolo, tucked away in a small transept, are extraordinary paintings by Caravaggio. He was regarded as the bad boy of art. I don't myself go along with this. I admit he did dreadful things, like killing someone over a game of tennis but none of us can judge. Yet it's that violent reputation that makes this so moving. This is the conversion of St. Paul. St. Paul, who also was a kind of bad boy, the, the persecutor of the Christians, the Jew who was determined to crush out this new religion, suddenly received a vision of Christ, who said to him, Paul, why are you persecuting me? And here we see Paul thrown off his horse and blinded. Now that's very significant, because a man on a horse is a proud man, above the others, in control. When a man is thrown off the horse, all that trapping of power and, and dignity and I know what I'm doing is taken away. And Caravaggio, doesn't show the story of the conversion in terms of Paul, he shows it in terms of the horse. You can see the horse is nervous, upset by the fact this man has suddenly slid under his belly. He's become lower than the animals. And the, the groom at the back is a very moving figure, because the groom is completely unconcerned with Paul. He's only concerned with the horse, and the, the groom 
is tenderly, sensitively leading the horse out of the picture. Now this taking conversion into the realm of reality, truth, it's still a vision, it's still a conversion, but it's happening in the world of horses. That's, that's a marvelous insight. Of all Roman artists, Michelangelo is surely the most famous. He even designed the Dome of St. Peter's. He was a strange, lonely man, afraid of God, and perhaps that's why he often troubles me. But here is his Pieta, the one work for which I would sacrifice every other treasure in the Vatican. Michelangelo is an artist of the utmost terribilita. He's awesome. He's, he's the colossus of art. And I'm struck by the great loneliness of these figures, merely like a mountain, beautiful and grieving, and Jesus like a great river flowing down her. They're both isolated and yet so intimately united because they belong to one another. Michelangelo himself was a very lonely man, a man of enormous tempestuous passions who, who lost his mother when he was young. It was a family of men, irascible old father and squabbling brothers, and you feel he was always seeking for what he shows us here, this beautiful young mother, too beautiful ever to grow old, said Michelangelo. And of course, that's the remark of a man whose mother died young. Always the maternal figure was young and beautiful to him. And yet, I don't myself feel the, the anguish of a mother for her child. I feel more the wonderful companionship of male and female. It's the only work Michelangelo ever signed, as if to say, this is what essentially I'm about. Unity, fullness, completion, security, love. 